What's up guys, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can use PODCS or Print On Demand Creative Studio, I'm assuming that's what it stands for, uh, how you can use their suite of tools to increase your print on demand sales and the best part about it, I'm even gonna zoom in on it for you, is that you can get started for free. As of recording this video, everything that they have built into this robust platform is completely free. Now, as far as I can tell, because I was looking at the pricing, uh, at some point in the future, they are going to add a paid tier, but they also say that they'll always have a free version. So they have got a great suite of tools for any print on demand seller, but specifically really useful tools for Merch by Amazon and Redbubble. And I did notice an Etsy tag um, analyzer, Etsy keyword analyzer built in there as well. So what I'm going to do in this video is basically walk you through how to get the most out of their software so that it can become a regular part of your print on demand workflows that ultimately leads to increased sales. So let's get started. PODCS has a global user base. It's an up and coming tool. And what's really great is that they really care about the feedback from the end users, even though it's free you'll find that they're very responsive to your feedback. So if you have suggestions for new functionality or you just wanna talk to them, tell them what you like or give them any suggestions, uh, you can look forward to them implementing those in the near future. So it's really cool. Um, not all the tools have the ability to do that, but their developers are really great when it comes to turning requests around. So in order to get started though, guys, all you gotta do is, uh, I'll put a link in the description so you can get started, but go ahead and just click register in the top right corner. And from here, go ahead and create an account. Once you've signed in, you'll be taken to the dashboard. Uh, you can see here they publish release notes on the left-hand side. Uh, they've got links to a lot of their most popular tools right here in the dashboard, as well as on the sidebar. So I'm just gonna work with the sidebar over here, which by the way, you can toggle on and off if you choose to. So I'm gonna go to the Redbubble tools, and why don't we just go take a look at all of these in order and kind of walk through the utility of these, like why they're useful, why they spent time building these out for us to use for free. So let's look at Redbubble Trends first. Now here in the Redbubble Trends guys, what you'll notice is uh, it's up to date, it's updated daily with the top Redbubble Trends. So if you're focused exclusively on Redbubble, this is gonna be extremely useful to you because as we say, uh, Redbubble is where you really want to be like just following the customer base. Um, the evergreens on Redbubble do not do nearly as well as they do on Amazon on Etsy, uh, on other places. Um, I did a video where I talked about publishing over 40,000 designs to Redbubble. However, I'm targeting mainly evergreen niches and my numbers were not very impressive. But if I was just gonna show up every day, go to the Redbubble Trends tool and look at what is trending today, uh, I would be much better off, okay? So you can see as of me recording this, and by the way, Redbubble, <laughs> a lot of uh, actors, a lot of big brands tend to trend on Redbubble, so just always be mindful of that. Like what you post to Redbubble, I would not consider cross posting to other platforms without doing your due diligence about um, if it's protected, okay? So right here we see like Eddie Munson is trending. So let's just say I don't know who that is. Oh, all right, well I click it, it brings me over here to Redbubble and it looks like he is a musician and that is why he is trending, all right? And what's really cool here is check this out. If I zoom in, you can see the top three categories where sales are taking place in this niche so we can tell right away that stickers represent over half t-shirts follow 37 percent posters three percent so if you think about it like a, a rock band musician hey he, a lot of stickers are selling well it's Redbubble. t-shirts that makes sense too posters of course you got your rock musicians you got your posters got it uh, and then you can even mouse over under where it says best sellers and it pops out and shows you what the best sellers actually look like. So you don't even have to leave this page to get some insights into the popular trending designs. That's really cool. Of course, you don't need to blindly enter a niche. You can also see right here uh, the competition. So it's gauging the competition based on the, um, well, how well it's trending, like how many people are searching for it, the search volume relative to the number of products. So you can see Eddie Munson, 2,147 products, high competition. If we go down to the second biggest trend, Whistlin' Diesel, uh, 1,741 products ranking on that. Although you'll look at number three trend as well, and they just added a space in between. Now, Redbubble's treat, treating that as a separate query, 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 <laughs> treating it as a separate, query, separate query. So that is why it's split out into separate search terms. So you can make your determination 
based on uh, or you can enter both honestly that's where also tags is going to help you like for instance why don't we just copy whistling diesel and next let's jump on over to the redbubble tag generator actually i want to show you this first so you can click get more information as well and then it does like a deep dive into uh this this query okay so you can see the related tags are available here and i was going to go to the tag generator and honestly use that as it's another roundabout way of getting relevant tags for this query um but this is what's useful here let me just reset for a second what's useful here is that if you don't know what you want to sell on redbubble so you come to the trends because we know on redbubble we want to be in the trends you find whistling diesel notice we didn't even click it to see what it is because it doesn't it doesn't really matter until we get to the design phase right but if we want to design again you can mouse over the the top 10 best sellers and you can kind of ascertain what to be targeting from that too but what if we need tags right we don't understand this niche we're on the outside looking in we're only in this niche because that's where the customer demand is so we don't necessarily need to understand it but we want to have relevant tags well you can do what i did and just click find out more or you can go to the redbubble tag generator that they have built into the podcs app go ahead and put your term and then click search it only takes a couple seconds for it to load all of the relevant tags and this is based on how often they're occurring in redbubble when you query this keyword or this phrase now you can go ahead and click which ones you want to copy by manually clicking them or you know what you can do that's much easier uh, you can just click copy all tags and that's the yellow button above my head now just to show you that it works you can then paste them and i mean this is also showing you an example of red people on redbubble tag spamming clearly that is what's happening here uh but you know i mean guys we're like two years in from when the tag spamming started redbubble doesn't seem to care i'm not telling you that i tag spam but i'm telling you that people that are achieving success in these trends and when i say achieving success that means they're making sales well look behind me like this is what they're doing all right this is not a function of the podcs app the podcs app is in real time going and looking at redbubble and just grabbing what's working from the best sellers so when you see something like this just understand that so what i would do too because redbubble does limit the number of tags you can have is you can like definitely um cut some of them off or you can go into like notepad plus plus and count the number of uh you can count the number of commas and then if you see i think it's like 50 tags max if you see more than 50 commas you need to cut the rest off all right but I just wanted to show you guys that that in fact does work. So that is the tag generator. And like I said, if you don't, if you want to avoid all the spam, you can just you know manually select like the top 15 maybe. I think there was like a Redbubble help section article that said grab 15 tags per listing. So you can just grab like 15, click copy, and then just use those. Okay, so they make it very easy to do this at scale and to be fast, right? You don't get bonus points. You don't get increased ranking because it took you a long time to research, design, and upload. You don't get bonus points for that. So in a perfect world, it would take you less time to do all of those processes that you're gonna iterate through many, many times, right? Let's say you wanna upload 50 a day. Well, you need to be quick. Otherwise, it's gonna take you all day to max out those uploads. So the faster you can do it, the better, and PODCS is making it quite easy for you to do, okay? Also, they've got more in-depth tutorials built in as well, in case you wanna check those out. Um, they they may always make those available. Uh, so from when we clicked uh, more in-depth information you can see here like what shops are competing on this trend that's actually pretty cool so you can check out those shops you can see the average price point of products within this niche okay so they actually go and they scrape all of this data and put it together for us right here um, by the way when i'm doing my redbubble shop reviews and i'm constantly like hey increase the price of your stickers notice the average price of these stickers three dollars twenty cents all right, but when I'm doing these shop reviews, people are selling stickers at like $1.25, you know? So make sure you increase your sticker prices. We wanna get paid for our work. All right, and last, underneath Redbubble, for the Redbubble sellers, they have the Redbubble rank section. So here they are attempting to rank the best selling products, almost as if like, you know how Amazon has the best seller rank? Well, if every product on Redbubble was categorized in the same category and could be assigned a numeric bestseller, well, that is what they are attempting to do here. Now, I will say this could actually be quite useful because for instance, like if you're just looking at this from a design style or, you know, if you're looking at niches too, that could help. But for instance, if I just want to sit down today, I'm like, all right, I want to make some money on Redbubble. How am I going to do this? Well, we know Redbubble stickers rank extremely well on Google and probably their best-selling product type, honestly, on Redbubble is stickers. 
So let's see dog distraction sticker. Look at this design style right here, right? Like we know we can expand this style of a sticker, the text message. Like I know it's so simple, right? It's so obvious yet. How often do we sit down and we're like, all right, design session. What do I do? This is easy. This can be scaled out so easily. Create the little chat bubble and then just go ahead on a spree of swapping in and out different text, different niches. Hold on. I see a dog. Hold on. I see a bear. Hold on. I see a turtle, whatever. Um, it could be completely different text, by the way. And that can be inspired by research that you do in the PODCS app. Okay. So this is definitely like pretty useful. Um, don't sleep on this one. Also, since we just looked at the Redbubble trends, I wanted to jump on over to the trademark search tool or TM search tool as it's labeled in the uh, navigation there and just show you how quickly and easily we can do trademark validation using this tool. This is very useful for Redbubble, for Amazon Merch, for Etsy, for everything print on demand related. Although I will note really quickly that a lot of Redbubble big trends tend to be like uh, famous people. And so you won't see trademarks for famous people because if they're not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not an expert, but my understanding is basically that generally speaking, if they're not an elected official, then I don't think you should be like including uh, anything. You shouldn't be targeting them as like a niche. Basically, that is my general understanding. But I think for elected officials, it's like we have the ability to. So, for instance, you can do Trump, you can do Biden, et cetera, and there's no problems there. So let's see. Um. As far as validating like a, a trademark, why don't we just type in uh, fireworks with, you know, July 4th around the corner. So I type in fireworks and you'll notice right away that it's searching as far as trademark offices go. It's searching the US, uh, United Kingdom, Germany, France, Spain and Italy. So that's really cool. We're getting the international search. Now, if you're not interested in the international results, why don't you just go ahead and click US only? But hopefully you guys see the utility, especially the merch by Amazon sellers in being able to do all in one search, uh, an international trademark search. Okay. Now you can also sort if you want to by, you know, you can sort by market and just search uh, one market at a time. You can search by niche class. Okay. Now we know that like 25 is generally speaking, the one that we're most interested in. Cause that's going to represent like clothing t-shirts specifically. Uh, those are going to be typically the best sellers, like especially for merch by Amazon. We know they have the most rigorous approval rejection algorithm. So it's up to you, but you could choose to um, drill down into specific classes of your trademark search. Um, you can also switch up the status. So generally speaking, the ones that we really need to uh, look out for are the ones tagged in red that say active. OK, that means it's registered. That means that we should be avoiding this. OK, but obviously I, I did a international search. So, you know, we've got one matched in France here, but uh oh, look above it. United States, except it says niche class 42. So if we come over here and we hover over it, we see that the classification for that trademark is graphic arts designs. So if we want to sell the word fireworks on a T-shirt, we should still most likely be OK. Uh, we can see some statuses as pending, but Guys, not all pending goes through. I did do an interview with somebody uh, from Trademark Watchdogs Facebook group talking about how they attempt to stop these frivolous trademarks where people try to file for like really broad trademarks on items like t-shirts so they can have a monopoly. And um, yeah, so that's a whole thing, a whole nother topic for a different day. But this is a really, really, really valuable, really useful uh, trademark search tool that's like very well laid out and it works really quickly and again of course right now you can still use it for free so make sure you guys take advantage of that like make sure you bookmark this honestly so now let's jump on over to the merch by amazon section uh, this is a really cool tool that is built out full functionality as you can see behind me so if i scared anybody away just so you know you can just disable the advanced options if it you know you don't want to see all those filters that is always an option okay now to get started, um, you can search all marketplaces or you can do just United States. Now they defaulted to the United States because that is where most of the money is made. That's where, you know, hundred, what is it like over a hundred million households have prime. And we know that when we list those merch by Amazon t-shirts, they are prime eligible. So uh, I typically optimize everything that I do for the United States market. You can filter by product type. You can sort by uh, BSR reviews, price, newest, oldest. Um, generally speaking, I'm almost always just going to sort by BSR. So it makes sense that that's the default, uh, but you can just jump up here and do a keyword search. So for instance, July 4th is coming uh, a sub niche of July 4th that everybody likes. And that's a fun one that, um, you probably can get a lot of kids interested in is, you know, fireworks, right? Not just kids. Everybody loves fireworks. 
Um, but I mean, yeah, adults, especially, right. Especially, um, probably like teenage years love their fireworks at July 4th. Um, because of course they can get into trouble with them. So here we go. Fireworks t-shirts, uh, look no further than right here. We have just an absolute ton of options for our fireworks sub niche. So we said, okay, July 4th is a big trend. What's a sub niche of July 4th. So we're not just competing with the most broad keywords possible. July 4th led us to fireworks fireworks led us to all of these sub niches okay now i already went in and favorited a bunch of these just to give you an example of how we might use the um favorites thing but by the way you can just hover over these and click the heart and when you click the heart it adds it to your favorites so let's just say that we're working with a team of designers or you know theoretically well we can just add a bunch of these to our favorites and then either share the login or just take a screenshot you know and email this to our designers and say, hey, I want you to make a bunch of July 4th unique shirts for us. Here's a bunch of ideas as far as sub niches go that you can target. All right. And they make it super easy to do that here using the favorite section. And again, you just hover over it and click the heart. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I just did a basic keyword search. This is also great for just getting a general feel for what style of design is selling right now. You'll notice that they have like the BSR displayed right there. 26,000, 27,000, 73,000. Um, you can also then click detail. Oh, they have the price point as well. Um, estimated monthly sales as well. You can go ahead and click when it says details and it'll expand into the advanced view. Um, so you can see the brand title marketplace, the ASIN, uh, they do have like a reverse ASIN search that you can use. Um, it's not really like if we're already looking at the in-depth details right here, then the reverse ASIN tool doesn't make as much sense to use the reverse ASIN tools more or less um, good for like looking up data for for products that you you found on Amazon like outside of this tool uh, so I believe that we can then if you just want to see the reverse ASIN while I'm talking about it go to the keywords analysis tool on the sidebar click reverse ASIN lookup paste the ASIN click search give it a second and boom so like I said, we were already kind of looking at the um, in-depth details on the other tab here, but if we were on Amazon and we wanted more information on a product that we found over there, just bring it over here, reverse ASIN search, and you're good to go. Now, here's what's super cool too. You can find the relevant keywords driving traffic to these products, okay? So if we want to set up some ads to our July 4th shirts ahead of the holiday, which by the way, it's a really good idea to do so you get a good organic rank before the massive, massive, like apex in search volume spike. Uh, you definitely want to be getting ranked on the most relevant keywords, the highest value keywords. So they basically lay them out for you in order right here. Uh, they also have some additional, like, you know, you can click and go to Amazon. You can uh, click here and it takes you to the keywords analysis tool, but it plugs in that phrase for you. So there's definitely, and it, it ranks the trend, by the way. So it's showing you this is trending up. Um, showing you the growth rate over three months, 12 months, etc. The search volume, okay? I'm assuming this data is from Google. I'm pretty sure you can click right here and see Google trend data if you like to see the line graph, which helps you basically time the value of this phrase. So for instance, right now, 4th of July shirts for women is what we're looking at the data for. And you can see right here, that's probably using like a Google Trends API, that yeah, right now it's a good time to be trying to get ranked on fourth of july shirts for women and we don't even know if this is the top we just know this is on a massive incline in interest at the moment as far as search volume goes okay so again this is you don't have to always go this deep but if you're in like tier 10 for instance you may want to go this deep because those upload slots matter quite a bit to you all right or if you're in any tier and you have the ability to run ads well these long tail keywords uh, are really going to be helpful. Like for you know, Fourth of July shirt for women. I know that's a, that's long tail keywords. It's still pretty generic, but uh, definitely can help. All right. So you can see the um, price history and the BSR rank. Uh, in this case, they've inverted the BSR. So the higher that blue line goes, that indicates more sales. I know that different different platforms like sometimes they keep it inverted or they invert it. Other times they just let it go down. Um, so yeah, so the higher and up and to the right it goes, the more sales it's generating. So you can see back on June 2nd, the or sorry, that's June 12th, uh, BSR was 65,000 and the price point was $15.98. Fast forward to June 16th, all right, 
that's four days later they the, the bsr was cut in half to thirty two thousand, and they increased the price by a dollar to 16.98 now fast forward to Ju, uh, june 21st bsr has dropped to twenty six thousand. price point increased again by another dollar to 17.98 so they're gradually walking the price point of this product up as the bsr increases as the bsr improves when i say increases as the bsr improves it's obviously going down uh, so this is really valuable insights to have guys and then of course they've got similar designs down here as well that you can um, plug into okay so we went through favorites we went through the um, in-depth analysis did we miss anything else oh they they let you scan deleted products um i'm gonna open that on a new tab really quickly so you'll never know why these were removed but if you just want to have some fun and scroll through the removed designs uh, you can pretty much just infinite scroll and it'll keep loading more and more designs that were recently removed from amazon that if you try to uh, click and view on amazon you're going to get the dogs of amazon page all right so i wanted to keep the product research tab open just to show you guys that you can also expand the advanced section and they've honestly got pre-built filters for you so you don't necessarily have to plug in manually uh into anything into here you can just use their pre-built filters if you want like for instance rapid growth new products so we click that it inputs the um, various things like 20 sales a month uh minimum monthly sales sales growth rate 10 percent or higher they didn't put a max in there you can also put a max if you want to uh click search and we'll see some rapid growth new products all right um, you may want to also exclude some of the big brands, for instance, like Top Gun. Let's see if that works. So I realized why the Top Gun stuff is finding its way into search results, because when you pull them up, you notice that it's like Father's Day Christmas company. So it's just somebody infringing on like the Top Dad stuff or Top Gun stuff. And then this one's already been removed. So yeah, just a quick reminder. Obviously, we know not to infringe on the big brands. Uh, but that's one way to just get filters to show products that have seen a massive spike in BSR, indicating massive increase in sales velocity over a short period. Um, potential products is another filter that they've built out. They say good sale growth rate in the last six months. So they're taking a wide time horizon and looking at like average sales growth rate month over month over month and probably just looking at average BSR uh, month over month. Okay, so you can see some additional stuff. It's still, you know, it's merged by Amazon. It's a research tool almost always going to be a lot of trends at the high end where the money is made is typically when you scroll and scroll and scroll and you start getting away from the big trends and that's where you might find some uh, value for instance i was looking at this before i started recording this video and what you notice is there's quite a bit of like for instance i mean it's it's mid 2022 right now and there's a lot of like pro trump stuff all right but i would still be like super I, I don't know if i'd feel comfortable uploading that just because we know that on a dime they can say oh no more you know pro trump stuff we've seen that in the past right um and then making fun of biden is is trending right now obviously as well um but yeah you can scroll through and just see whatever you see as trending uh high royalty products so they'll actually show you like just based on price point um what are the best sellers of course you're going to see some like big brands in there that can command a high price point as well and hot selling products these are um basically a three month time horizon so not quite six months but a shorter time horizon and you're going to see even more of like the current trends so pride juneteenth fourth of july father's day etc all right um, they have a sales estimation tool here as well if you just want to kind of spy on a certain asin asin that's basically the amazon like id for a product so i just used one of the built-in ones here uh, that it's suggested and you can see the sales estimates on a day-to-day -day basis man this product is absolutely destroying <laughs> and you're seeing it actually just kind of jump um, over time you're seeing the increase here too so i mean this one um looks like it's related to top gun so it's going to be correlated to the, the release of that movie um, when it's in box office everybody's talking about it everybody's going out to see it you're going to see a spike in sales so that makes a lot of sense uh, as well but also you can like hover over it you can see the bsr you can see the estimated daily units sold and you can see the price so you have all that history you can use that to inform your decision making process moving forward all right, so we went through the favorites. Um, just know that I showed you Merch by Amazon favorites, but you can also favorite keywords and products for Redbubble as well. And I cannot forget to show you the social media holidays section where it is just showing you random holidays for every day of the year, 365 days. Who knew that there were this many random holidays 
but there are, okay? So let's just look at, um, I don't know, June 3rd, all right? June 3rd. This is only June 3rd. Chimboraza Day. Of course, I pick one where I can't pronounce the word. Uh, Love Conquers All Day. National Chocolate Macaroon Day. National Donut Day. National Egg Day. Repeat Day. World Bicycle Day. World Cider Day. So there's just, that's just, that was just June 3rd. All right, so there's no shortage of ideas that you can target. Now, if it's if you're in the month of June, I would be looking at least a month out. So I would be looking at like July. Um, you know, I can go ahead and click July, and it just anchors me down to to that month. You can see there's plenty of ideas though on a day-to-day basis. Uh, there's tags that we can use. There's also categories. So disobedience day, and they give you a category: special interest, first day of NAI DOC week, cultural. Um, tags, ethnic festivities, right? Na- International plastic bag free day environment is the tag, right? So you can also, it links you if you choose to use it, you can click like the Instagram icon here above my head. You can go and look at posts on Instagram related to this hashtag if there are any. So, and yep, there is. So this can give you an idea of like what sort of artwork trends, what sort of thing might people be interested in when it comes to this category. Um, I don't know. There's definitely no harm done in just kind of browsing through the hashtags on Instagram here. So um, you can do the same for Twitter, Pinterest, Google, etc. Uh, that's pretty much, I think, covers everything. Don't forget, they have tutorials over here. Lots and lots of tutorials that you can use to get the most out of their tool. I, I just meant to give you a high level overview in this video, and it's already gone on pretty long, so I don't want to go too much longer. Um, they have a support line over there on the sidebar as well if you'd like to contact them. Like I said, they're very receptive to user feedback. So if you have um, suggestions for improvements, you just want to say thank you, anything like that, go ahead and do that. And then if I hide myself, you'll notice there's also a help button in the bottom right corner that you can go ahead and click. And uh, that also will get in contact with them. So don't hesitate to do that, guys. But let me know your thoughts on PODCS in the comments below. I would love to hear them. Let me know how this has helped you increase your sales. If you have questions, let me know as well. Um, We'll see if we can't get those answered. But guys, I hope you found this useful. Use the link in the description to get started for free today. And I'll see you tomorrow with a new video.